And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors Channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from a lovely little Westlake Village, California. We're going to talk about Bitcoin price action, some of the news going on, what exactly is happening with this market right now. And I think Watch Guru put it nicely just in. It says 65 million Bitcoin liquidated within minutes following fake reports that BlackRock's spot ETF was going to get approved. It will get approved at some point. However, what's most likely they delay, 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 delay until, um, you know, the prices are lower. So BlackRock can buy those Bitcoin a bit lower. That's one theory. Um, what I was telling my cousin over the weekend, shout out to Rob while we were hanging out with the kids. Look, um, if they're going to send it down, they're going to send it up first because that is where the liquidity lies. They don't want to leave that liquidity behind and let all those people take profits on them. So those exchanges, those dirty market makers, that's what they're doing. And uh, let's jump into the charts real quick here and take a look. First off, well, at what I'm looking at on Ethereum, why not? Why not on the shorter term time frame for some fun? Um, Big time liquidity hanging out down here and for Bitcoin kind of doing the same thing. So um, for that chart, I'm going to bring up the heat map. Boom. So the liquidity, actually, I think that they're going to hunt for right here is probably at about 1550. Um, but, but more importantly, this guy right here. Um, also taking a look at Bitcoin on this heat map. Again, this is talking about where liquidations happen. So at 1700, uh, there's a bunch of people getting liquidated who were short on the market. And at, uh, call it 1500, a bunch of people that were long are going to get liquidated. Uh, but just using this heat map as a guide of where Price is most likely to go. It makes sense, right? Where the liquidity lies is where they're going to push the price. And here's a perfect example, I think, of a big liquidity hunt. So uh, everybody's looking at, okay, they're just, it's, it's almost there. It's almost to 26,400, which has kind of been our base case for the next major higher low. Could be wrong now. Uh, see if this move proves itself by basically, uh, you know, staying above the last, you know, major higher low at, well, it's not easy to see here, but they grabbed all this liquidity up here first, trapped all these people and, uh, you know, likely to send it down to that 27.4. And really, as long as we are holding that zone, I'm looking for this to kind of just play itself out um, on the higher term time frames And what am I talking about there? I'm talking about this, guys. We've been talking about the Bitcoin having cycle, the four-year cycle. Here's where you're at. Uh, the orange line was the uh, 2017 rally. The uh, red line was the 2013 rally. And this just shows 52 weeks prior to the having event. Well, you know, we were 52 weeks in April. Now we're, you know, less than that. So we're almost to that having cycle, uh, you know, time for a bull party, right? Not quite there yet. Not, not, it's very risky time still. Low liquidity in the market. The retail investors probably don't get back in until we're right before the having event. And, um, mm, and that is what happens when you're sitting on stream doing um, <laughs> doing your uh, uh, trades at the same time. But that's okay. Um, risk management is in. So a bunch of people got liquidated on this big candle on Bitcoin. And is she going to go for the higher low or is it just a fake out for Ethereum? We will see. We will see. And okay, here's what we're talking about. So as long as, you know, Bitcoin is below, well, that's, that's a huge range. That's a huge range. Um, 
And here's what I would suggest is that uh, any kind of a rally attempt that fails to get back above the 618 on even the uh, hourly time frame, call it the 15 minute time frame. Uh, I, I'm, I'm using the five minute right now, but, uh, you know, back above that, um, 28, five on the shorter term time frame is going to look good for continuation higher, but really we got a lot of work to do. A lot of damage has to be done. The liquidity has been grabbed. So, uh, it's pretty much air. Yeah. So I, I'd be waiting, waiting for back above 30,000 bucks. Um, and let's take a look at uh, Dixie. More importantly, um, sorry, Ethereum. I want to say Ethereum. What's Ethereum doing? And kind of um, a similar move, you know, threat of a move up to 1700, 1800. Um, but after doing that damage, uh, the weekend trap. Just looking at the weekend kind of. Is it the weekend trap or is this the weekend bull market push to the upside uh, where we wait for the kind of midweek reversal and a little bit more action to play out to the upside could be the case. Um, if we start closing back below, you know, this this pivot right here at 27.9, that's going to be a good indicator that more downside is to come. Um, and... On the short term, what am I looking at, actually, for the liquidation? It's really, really fun just tracking this liquidity here, how it how it moves. And uh, essentially, these bright pink and red, you know, most people are long now. We're net long. Uh, we got 112 shorts and uh, 375 longs. So the longs get liquidated down here. It's easier to push the price down right now, in my opinion, because everybody just, all the retailers got long. Everybody said, oh, I'm put, putting my bull pants on and uh, party back to the moon. Bitcoin just scratched above 30,000 bucks, which is a pretty darn good um, indicator. But um, just looking at this, when you get at these big nasty wits like this, that we wanted actually to see for this to be bullish, in my opinion, we wanted to see that uh, really happen to the downside. Now, if Bitcoin fails to move momentum back to the upside, which it will today, above 27.99. So if we close below 27.99, not going to be good for the bulls at all. Um, just not going to be good for the bulls. Not going to be good for the bulls at all. Do I want to take the profits? No. No. Why? Well, I'm going to show you here on my little liquidation chart. So there's about seven, eight, nine million shorts to be liquidated at this level. Another 47 million at this level. Do we get one more spike up here, grab that liquidity, and then push it down to the $100 million liquidation of 1550? Probably. And uh, probably not going to stop there. You know, 1553, you know, lots of liquidity down to the downside. Is it going to happen in one day? I don't know. These guys are pretty violent with that price action. Maybe it's because the kids are off of school. Checking out uh, Fear and Greed Index is still at a 47. People are kind of uh, neither bullish or, nor bearish. And so for your having cycle, still intact. Bitcoin, you know. If anything, this huge wick to the upside shows strength in the market. But as I'm looking at traditional markets as well, it just looks like a bear uh, distribution pattern. Um, you know, essentially when NASDAQ, where's my NASDAQ? So just keeping an eye on good old NASDAQ and Dixie was up 200 this morning for NASDAQ. Dixie is kind of down um, today. It's down today. But if this is just another lower high in the making and we can't push above here, you know, 
just distribution, right? Prices making lower highs and kind of lower lows. So um, retailers getting back involved in the market and then they're going to push it down, right? You know, more leverage they use going long, well, they can send it down and make more money to the downside. That's what it looks like to me. Um, again, failures uh, for this kind of idea, you know, for the S&P. Really, I want to use the last major high. Yeah. 14,569 for S&P and uh, 15,730. As long as we're below those last major highs, I'm going to say pressure's on on the downside. And Dixie is turning around here, turning around with the bear plug in place. If this does create another lower high, momentum stays at the downside below 106.48. You know, as the dollar comes down, you expect risk assets to continue the party to the upside. So point for the bulls there. Um, what was the Bitcoin therapist saying this morning? Because I know you all need some therapy. And here we go. We are so early. We are so early. Real estate, the most, you know, coveted market in the world. $326 trillion. That's the market cap. That's all the money invested in real estate. Debt, we're talking, I don't know, bonds. I thought bonds was bigger than $300 trillion, but give or take a few bucks. Um, equities, $100 trillion. Money, global money supply, $30 trillion. Gold, $12 trillion. Look at little bitty Bitcoin. To put it in perspective, that's all the money in Bitcoin. That's all the money in real estate. That's all the money in bonds and debt. And here's equities. So as it's just look at it at diff, as different buckets, right? Different buckets are going to, um, you know, as the water gets poured from one bucket to the other, you're going to see the price of the asset go up. So daily dose of Bitcoin therapy, not bad. Um, Open funding rates are positive right now, not at a consequential level, not even close. So you're paying to go long in the short term, paying to go long, paying to go long. And is Ethereum going to squeak this one out? Well, I think um, Dixie has a lot to do with this. I don't know if we got any major economic news that came out today. Uh, let's just check in on that really quick at myfxbook.com. And what do we see here? Any news for today? High impact. New York Empire State Manufacturing. Bullish for the dollar. What's coming up tomorrow? Nothing. Oh. Retail sales are tomorrow. Tuesday retail sales. Let's see what does Wednesday bring us. Wednesday this week, ideas to be keeping an eye out for. And maybe, you know, the reversal comes in. Mid building permits and housing starts. Uh, Fed Waller speech. That's going to be boring. Fed Cook. Oh, even more boring. Um Jobless claims on Thursday. So jobless claims in existing home sales on Thursday. And then Friday, taking a look at what's ahead. Baker Hughes. So, you know, could I be wrong to think that they um, are not going to continue to send it higher? As, uh, you know, it looks like short-term bounce. Um, and then... Judge it or not for Ethereum back above 1600 on Ethereum is going to look bullish. What about Bitcoin? BTC. And then I got to get to the gym because I'm chomping at the bit, been working all morning, and I've just found this actually to be a nice gym time for myself. Kind of early morning, midday. Um, look at all that liquidity. And kind of the middle of the road here, but you can see this big red node down here at about 26.5, 27.5, you know, this, this kind of area. And then to the upside, 
you know, lots of liquidity. No, 30 million. Let me run it again. Run it again. So, this was 140 million. Big one up here at 300 million. Wow. 363 million. Somebody put some big shorts on right there. Those are 25x shorts. It's going to take a lot to get through that damage. You can see now uh, people are still net long on Bitcoin. And I, you know, again, I think if they want to send it up there, sweep down here, put that higher loan in at about 26.4. Let's just see what that'll look like on the daily time frame. But Dixie could do it for us, guys. Dixie is the pretty powerful, um, pretty powerful. So that was the one hour candle trap. Is it a gravestone and we're just going up from here and if we can't really if we we can stay above 27 695 even on an hourly i'd say back below there you know next target down is going to be about 27 3 27 2 for a small bounce um momentum is beginning to decline and where are we sitting at at the top side of the range so more likely to come back down to the bottom of the range or the historical range lows at, uh, or the, the average, excuse me, more likely to come back to the average uh, based off of that. Let's take a look at the 15 minute. 15 minute, as long as Bitcoin is below this wick at 28.5, then you, you know, probably gonna see one more sweep down and an official test of that green 55. I do believe Ethereum has already done so and has broken through it to the downside um, so essentially, you know, getting some more longs involved as we're sitting below the bottom side of the range. Momentum is now declining. So a little bit more rangy price action, maybe a slow dribble down this time. Um, a slow dribble down. What does the five minute say? Bouncing off the purple 200, heading up for the green 55, low volatility. And yeah, they're probably going to spike it up one more time, as I said, somewhere around 1581, 1582. And then, and then they might uh, send it down. I don't know. I don't know, guys. But overall, Bitcoin is still in that macro four year cycle. This push to the upside, and I heard spot volume spot volume got involved uh spot buyers that's bullish for the market and thirty thousand bucks thirty eight thousand who could have known that this morning was going to be the morning um, but again if the daily momentum does not close above 27.9 to me i mean you know kind of above this level is good enough for me and you know as long as now we're above 27.141 going to look pretty bullish. Um, and this is going to be just the next higher low amid some higher highs on the daily time frame. Um, we didn't quite make it down to 27.4, did we? 27.518. I mean, pretty darn close, guys. Pre pretty darn close. And another bullish sign here for Bitcoin, if we don't reject, is after being away from the bullish control zone, usually the first pass is a nice rejection. We have now rejected the bearish control zone. And will we be putting in the hidden bullish divergence? No, not from this pivot. Will you have a phantom drive? Uh, nope. One, two, three. Nope, not really. But you will have bearish divergence if we do put in another high up here. And those moves have been rather swift to the downside. Unlike the swift banking system. All right, that's it out of me today. I hope you guys have a blessed and highly favored day. We kind of got the liquidation levels out of our system here. Or just the ideas behind where the liquidity lies for... Bitcoin or Ethereum, we're talking about 1500 and definitely think we get a bounce around 1550, 1530, kind of the last breakdown, breakout level. Um, and for Bitcoin, 
we, we already went over that, but I'll, I'll show you one more time for Bitcoin. I'm going to write it down. 1550. 1550. And 26.4. Okay, those are the important levels. If we just start breaking back below there, then you know uh, not not... The bears are out. The bears are out to get your coins. All right. Have yourself a blessed day, and we'll see you in the next one.